Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to do a paper squishy, but I have actually filmed this in like real time and haven't sped it up, so I hope you enjoy that. A lot of people are asking how long it takes me to make these, so I figured that I would do it in like normal time instead of like speeding it all up. So what I started off with doing was took a grey felt tip pen and just kind of drew out two rounded lines. I then took a medium brown coloured shade and just drew out a kind of wonky rectangle along the bottom of this shape and I coloured this in with the light brown colour. Now my pen did actually run out here so that wasn't ideal so I actually went in with a darker brown colour and that also ran out so I think I've been making way too many paper squishies because I haven't even had these pens for that long like honestly I don't know when I bought them maybe about uh, about four weeks ago I'd say I bought this packet and honestly they're running out so fast so I don't know if I just got like an old packet or like I've just been using them too much I know I've definitely been using them a lot um, I should really stop rambling on about my pens <laughs> so anyway what I did was just coloured in both the top and the bottom piece in the exact same way using the same colour in like a light brownie biscuity kind of shade I also went in with that dark colour like I said and basically I just did shading around the outside to kind of give it a little bit more dimension and yeah I just kind of did that basically. Um, if you don't have felt tip pens you can use felt tip pencils, crayons, paints, anything you have to colour this in. So once I had all the brown bit fully coloured in, I then went in with another dark brown felt tip pen and this kind of looks black on camera but it was actually really dark brown and what I did was did a um, dripping chocolate kind of effect so it looked like the chocolate from the s'mores had melted. So yeah, I basically just drew out the rough drippy type effect and then just coloured it in with this pen. So once I'd completely done the little drip chocolate bit, I then moved on and popped a little face on the front. And to do this, I just used my black Sharpie pen to draw out the eyes and the mouth. And I just coloured the eyes in with this pen also. You don't have to use a Sharpie pen. I like to use it because sometimes felt markers can kind of like um, seep out a little bit and make them not so crisp edge. So I do like to use a Sharpie or another black permanent marker to do the little details with. I then moved on with a pink marker and just kind of did little blushes next to both eyes and then I used my white Posca pen to add white dots to the eyes for a little bit of highlight. I also added some dots to the biscuit bits on the top and the bottom and I added some little highlights to each bit of the little chocolate drips. Now you can use like Tipex or like that corrector fluid, I don't know if it's called Tipex in other countries or not but it's called Tipex here, that white stuff that you use to kind of correct pen and this will also give you a nice opaque white finish. So what I then did was just cut out this shape and I just cut this out really loosely and then took another A4 piece of white paper and what I did was just stuck it down onto this using long strands of tape just sticking it down all over to cover the shape completely. Now some people have asked me if it could be laminated, which I do believe it can, I haven't got a laminator so I haven't tried it, but I know laminating does kind of make it more thicker if that makes any sense, so it might not squish so well as using a thinner tape, but it can also be used as well. So 
So once I taped all the way from the top to the bottom, what I then did was took my scissors again and just kind of roughly cut the shape out. And then what I did was I cut out exactly where I wanted it to be cut out on all the edges apart from one of the biscuit edges. Now I did actually cut inwards from where I had actually drawn to make the biscuit bits a little bit smaller and to cut out some of that grey felt tip pen because I didn't want the grey being on the marshmallow but I did want a little bit to add for the shadow. This is why I actually made this grey so that I could still keep a little bit of this in and give it a more 3D like effect than rather just using like a pink which I would cut out for example and this just really helped me to guide where I wanted to cut. So like I said I cut the little biscuit bits a little bit smaller because I realised that they were a little bit big and a little bit like misshapen and stuff so I just shaped them up at this size. So once I was fully happy with how it was cut out I then went ahead and taped it up. As you can see here the bottom bit is still attached and the reason that I keep this one side attached is so that the pieces of paper stay lined up once I go to tape it. This just makes it easier to handle and easier to get the tape in the right places and stuff as otherwise we'd be cutting it out and readjusting like as we go around and there's no need to do that when you can just keep this bit here. So for the tape what I do is I like layer it on on its side so that half is on the piece of paper and half is off. What I then do is take my scissors and just kind of make little snips towards the piece of paper and then I just kind of fold each bit of tape around the paper so that it sticks to the back, sealing up the edges. I do this with all the different types of edges, straight ones, curved ones and stuff like that as it does give a lot neater to finish than if you were just to use the tape as the full thickness when turning it around. I've tried this and really you can't get into the little bits so doing it this way by cutting it into little bits you can really get a really nice finish. So once you get to all the way around the shape bit and you get back to the bit where you've left that piece of paper, you'll then want to just cut this off before taping up those two sides of the biscuit. And the reason that you want to do this is just again so that you can get your tape really close to the edge that you want it to be on and then have that opening ready to be stuffed up. Once you've completely taped it up, it is then ready to be stuffed and this time I am actually going to be stuffing it a little bit different. I usually use toy stuffing or like shredded bits of foam that I have left over from squishies and stuff like that. But today I wanted to use a plastic bag as a lot of people have been suggesting me use it. Um, so yeah, I've just basically taken a clear plastic bag and just kind of scrunched it up. I did actually put a little bit of toy stuffing inside because my bag wasn't that big once scrunched up so I just added a bit of stuff in to add a little bit extra size. Now you don't have to do this at all, um, you can just use the bag if you want to, um, but yeah I just did that because I had it hanging around and I was like you know what I just want to use that up. So what I did was just opened up the little um, s'mores kind of paper bag and I just kind of stuffed 
the plastic bag and toy stuffing inside. Now this did take a lot of kind of fiddling about with to be honest because I'd I think I'd overstuffed it with the stuffing. So maybe the stuffing was a bad idea actually. I'm not really sure. But anyway, as you can see here, it did kind of split a little bit. But it's okay, that doesn't matter. You just want to keep going and fill up the shape as much as possible. Just filling it up as obviously all the way to the top just so that you get it really nice and dense. So once I got it all inside I then took little bits of tape and just taped it up while squeezing together with my left hand. This I found is the easiest way if you just hold it in place with your left hand and then tape with your right you can kind of get a really neat tight finish. You'll want to just go over all these bits, repair any damaged bits, I did actually accidentally rip it here um, whilst pushing in the very last bit so I just taped that back up just to fix it. This is another thing by the way, if the paper rips, honestly just pull it tight and then just tape it over. If you tape over the whole back you won't get any rips at all, but yeah like I said it's really really easy to repair if you do get any damages. So I just kind of taped it all up, fixed all the little bits, um, sealed it all up so that all the stuffing was completely inside and completely secure in there. So once it was fully taped up, the squishy was then complete. Now I think I made mine a little bit too dense by adding that um, toy stuffing, but it did turn out pretty well, it does bounce back nice and fast, um, it's not very slow rising, but like I said it does keep its shape really really well and as you can see here when I press it really hard, it does just kind of pop straight back to where you want it to be. It doesn't crinkle, it didn't rip, it didn't do anything like that, it just it just stayed really nicely really so I am actually quite happy with how this like bag stuffing kind of turned out so I definitely will be using that again. Um, I just want to say a huge huge thank you while I'm here rambling on about this squishy, um, a huge thank you for 15,000 subscribers, like honestly I'm so so grateful. It was only I think a week ago we hit 10,000, like it was the 27th and now it's the 5th. So, like, honestly, can you believe that? There we go, one, seven, nine days. Nine days, and they've got 5,000 more people. Oh, I just can't believe it. I'm so, so grateful to everyone who's joined my channel recently. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm just, I'm really happy with that. So thank you so, so much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as it will help me to see if you want more Paper Squishy videos. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.